Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about the application lifecycle of a ASP.NET Core application. So uh, first of all, what is a web application? Uh, a web application, I think, basically it's um, it's a application that handles HTTP request and um, process it and returns a HTTP response for the browser to uh, interpret and uh, renders the HTML on the browser. Then, so then a ASP.NET Core application, Core web application, is uh, also a web application. And uh, let's look at this diagram that shows uh, this uh, gray area contains everything that uh, that is ASP.NET Core, all of the components. And uh, it's the same thing that starts from a browser. The, the user types in the URL and then um, uh, it sends a HTTP request to a IIS server. The IIS uh, listens to port 80 or port 443. And, um, and then in this case, in SP9 core, in this case, uh, it acts as a reverse proxy. And the reverse proxy does basically nothing um, but return the, um, I mean, forward the HTTP request to the Castro server. The Castro server is uh, kind of hosted inside a console application. Uh, and this is part of ASP.NET Core, by the way. And what the Castro server does is that it first encapsulate uh, the HTTP request into the HTTP context object. And actually, before the Castro server runs, it's configured with uh, the dependency injection um, container, which contains all of the dependent uh, classes. Um, for the middleware to to use to um, to use uh, for depend dependency injection uh, purpose, it also um, contains the configuration uh, of the middleware. It contains what middleware are registered and how they are configured. So so when the HTTP uh, when the Castro server uh, encapsulates the HTTP request into HTTP context. It is then the HTTP context is then passed to the first middleware, and then the second middleware, and the third middleware, and so on and so forth. So the configuration of the uh, middleware is, uh, I mean, the sequence, the order is important. So. So then when the first middleware receives the HTTP context, it tries to process, but if it cannot, then it passes that to the next one, and then to the next one. It can process a little bit and, and pass, pass it to the next one and does, and does something else a little bit, and then um, it passes it to the next one. If, if the third one, for example, it can completely process and uh, handle the HTTP request, inside the HTTP context object, then it will actually short circuit the pipeline. It will not go on to the next middleware. It will just return the, um, the results, the HTTP response, and inside the HTTP context back to the, the parent middleware, and then to the top level middleware, and then it, all the way to the first middleware, and then it returns the HTTP context to the Castro web server. And then the Castro web server will uh, kind of translate that HTTP context to back to HTTP response and pass that to IIS. And IIS uh, is again uh, acting as a reverse proxy and pass that HTTP response to the browser and the browser renders the response in, in, in HTML. So that kind of uh, is uh, the application lifecycle of a ASP.NET Core application. Um, so the um, we will we'll look at the, the codes. Um, actually, we will look at the codes right now. So this is a 
This is a web application that I just created. And uh, let's focus on the program.cs file for now. Um, I have um, originally this would look like yeah this would look like this so in order to um, make it easier to we're going to see it clearly in order in order to see it clearly in debug mode I have uh, just broke it down into three different lines basically it's the same thing just so that we can uh, set breakpoints on each one of them um, that's why I did that so so this is a console application right so the console application and this is this is actually the uh, cashew server and the console application hosts the web server right the web server so first it calls this method this method basically configures um, by the way everything here is uh, is the web is the is is this so first it costs this method to configure the um, uh, the the dependency injection actually right because it goes through the startup well, it's not only dependency injection. It also, um, it's also the conf um, it also contains the method. So this it has two methods: config configure services and configure. The configure services is the method to 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 do the dependency injection, and the configure is the method to configure the uh, middleware pipeline. And let's actually run it and see how it runs in action. Uh, let's set breakpoints here, 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 and there's two places, uh, three places. Okay, let's run it. Okay, so um, so it's right here, and uh, I separate point this is place as well. We continue. Um, then it calls this create web host builder, and this builder, uh, this create web host builder actually says. I want to use startup class to do to do the configuration, right? And then it goes to the second line here. And then once the build is called, you will see that the configure services in the startup classes will be called as well. So here the configure services is a method name by convention, which means it's actually called by reflection using this the C sharp reflection and then um, and then here it does the dependency injection once this is done then then it will create the web host which is the um, the Castro server and the Castro server says I want to run so when it runs you will see that I will first call the configure method to configure the uh, middleware pipeline. So yeah, so as you can see, all these are the middleware. Um, yeah, for example, this middleware could be just uh, just this thing. Could be the middleware three, um, and uh, when the browser requests a static file for example image then the middleware 3 which is the static it could be the static files uh, middleware then the static files middleware will handle that request and returns everything back without going to the next and the next um, 
the rest of the the middleware. So. Yeah, so that's uh, that's everything. That's basically the um, the application lifecycle of the SP.NET Core application. So uh, let's stop this, and uh, we can actually run it differently. Let's close this and start from the beginning. Um, let's go here and uh, open folder in file explorer and then we can uh, go over here and go to the PowerShell window and we can say dot not run and this actually runs the uh, the console application and uh, we will see what happens now So you, you see, it says that it's using the launch settings.json configuration, and uh, it uses the uh, uses the files in this folder, and it's listening to this port. So if we copy, um, let's copy this one. We copy this. And uh, yeah, so it runs. Right, I've seen runs properly. So what I'm trying to show here is that this is actually running the um, application 5, which is in the browser, and it runs in a console application, right? And uh, somewhere here, it says, yeah, here, you see it says it's Castro, right? Um, and uh, I just want to, before I finish this video, I just want to point out a few other things about the configuration of SVNA Core. Um, web application first of all how does it know it needs to listen to 5001 and that's in the launch settings.json right so if we look at the <coughs> launch settings.json it's inside the um, properties so here it has um, this Right, so it's, if it's a development environment, then I listen to these two ports. Um, and also, uh, this www root folder contains all of the static files, uh, which are the images, CSS, JS, and uh, these folders are for MVC, Model View Controller. And um, the most important file, one of the most important file is uh, the project file. And uh, in SP.NET Core, you can just right click, right? And then you say, um, add a project file, and then you will open the project file, right? And the project file tells you um, what is the target framework and what are the NuGet packages. So you don't need the package.json to uh, configure your packages. Everything is in the uh, project file. And uh, here, it doesn't contain those uh, those unique identifi identifiers for the project files, uh, like in the past versions of ASP.NET. Um, and it doesn't include every single file that it needs to include by default, by convention. Um, all of the files in the folder will be included and it will be compiled. Um, if you want to exclude, then the exclusion is actually will be uh, specifically uh, pointed out here. So, and I, another thing is that I think from .NET Core 2.2 and up, 
and you can host it in IIS directly without the uh, Castro uh, web server. I think for if you host it in Windows, um, you can get around without the Castro web server because the performance is not as good as uh, the IIS. Um, but if you host it in different uh, um, different environment, um, maybe Linux, you probably still need the Castro um, Castro web server. Yeah, I think that's um, everything for today. And uh, I hope you uh, enjoy it. I hope it's helpful. And if you like it, please uh, please give it a thumb up and uh, uh, subscribe as well. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you in the next video.